My name is Vahid Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. I apologize for the delay, trying to get to the office today. I guess everybody's not doing social distancing. They're trying to get out there. I miscalculated the traffic. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. <laughs> yes, yep. Uh, so my name is Morgan Prince. I'm from Syracuse, New York. Uh, the same here. You know, I uh, I work for Mo actually, but um, I was just talking to my mom. She's like, traffic's picking up, so you're not the only one. <laughs> yeah, definitely traffic is picking up. So let's talk about success principles. If yeah. you had to give one or two advice to entrepreneurs, what would that advice would be? Well, first, that's the, the, the number one question is always, what would you tell your younger self 10, 15 years ago? Yeah. And then what advice do you have for others that are trying to get their, their journey started? Sure. Um, so I'm only 25. Now, I can deem myself to be successful, but not where, you know, I completely want to be in life, obviously. Um, if I could tell my younger self, you know, five, ten years ago, it's just don't give up. You know, Jim Valvano, Jimmy Villa, that's, you know, he's always uh, said at the SPs, don't give up, don't give up. And it's so, you know, a cliche, but you have to stay persistent. You have to stay focused, focused, prospecting through anything you do, whether it be, you know, sales or, you know, finding the next, you know, great potential, uh, you know, gym, <laughs> you know, whatever prospect, um, you know, you're going to do, just be persistent, stay focused, and, you know, you're going to find your path to success, which I've, I've witnessed, so. <laughs> if, if the going gets tough, what are some of the methods for them to get realigned? Because there are those times that, and especially in the business world, entrepreneurship, whatever you want to call it, right? Yeah. It gets a little bit tough. And a lot of people come to the point where they have to give up or they do give up and the temporary defeat or the failure overtakes them. What are some of the methods that you think individuals should implement so when that moment happens, we could get reset and not give up? Yeah. Um. So I check myself constantly. You know, uh, every quarter i would say if not monthly i'm going in to really do a self due diligence check am i doing everything that i can um am i you know taking the right uh i guess measures to go toward my ultimate goal um and really being honest with yourself you know if you're your biggest critic and you're your only success or your only failure so um if you're honest with yourself stay patient you know patience is is key and you know you, you will find the success so here's my other elements for you there are a lot of younger generation. Is that the case? Because I'm in a, I'm in a different age category, right? Yeah. When I was growing up, we didn't have this, I want it now, I want it now. It was there, but it definitely wasn't like this. Right. Is it the new consent? Is it the new trend? Is it the new way that the younger generations under age of 30, let's say, they want things at a higher speed where they want to get to that success faster? Is okay. that what you see? Oh, yeah. I see it with my peers, you know, people I work with, coworkers. Um, it's definitely the, you know, if, you, if you're if you in there and you expect something in seconds. If you send a text message, we automatically expect a reply. Um, so I think that goes true for just this, you know, just how the way the world is now. I don't necessarily think it's just people, you know, in the under, under 30 because I see, you know, my mom doing, she's almost 50. You know, so it's like. I think it's just, it's, it's holding yourself accountable again and going back to your priorities and importance, you know? So it's really just, but, oh yeah, a lot of people my age, you know, if they don't get the results quick enough, it's okay, next, you know, or if I'm not, you know, successful at my job within one or two years, then I've got to go find the next opportunity instead of going through the growing pains to grow yourself as well, so. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's so funny. I was talking to this young lady. She was about 28 years old. Well, I... I kind of figured she was 28. She didn't say she was 28. So I'm assuming 28, right? Yes. <laughs> so we were talking and she said she was at this job and she was doing this and she didn't like it. She didn't want to stay there, all of that. Now, the way she was talking about it and describing it, it felt like she was there for like 20 years. Right. Like I'm trying to figure out how many years she's at this job that she's <laughs> complaining all these different things, not in a bad manner. She wasn't bad mouthing the company and everything else. She just wasn't excited for promotion, all these different things. So I'm thinking like 5, 10, 15, 20 years she's been at this job. I'm like, so how long have you been there? She's like, oh, I've been there for 12 months. I'm like, you're complaining about 12 months? Like you haven't even experienced everything you need to experience in 12 months. You're just barely getting to know what the heck the company does 
and all your coworkers, managers, boss, owner, whatever you want to call it, right? So, right. and so you know, starting- we have to crawl before we walk as babies, right? And I think that we forget that as adults that we crawled before we walked. We have to get our feet wet before we're expecting, you know, this big, huge, uh, life-changing event. And I think people, once they, you know, don't like you said, receive that automatically, it's a okay, you know, let's jump ship. So for her instance, you know, being 12 months into a new position, you know, what really has she learned? Is it she just doesn't understand? You know, why? Why is she? So I would question it a little more, you know, just being me. But uh, yeah, I, you know, I see it a lot with people my age. So I'm not sure. And, and, and I asked that question with the profound question. I said, have you done your best? And, you know, I think she wanted to say yes, but I said, hey, think about that. Have you absolutely given it 100% and have you done your best? Yeah. If somebody had videotaped you and documented it in a video, if I look at it without me knowing who you are, would I say that this individual went beyond, re- I mean, she went all in, she deserves a promotion, she deserves to be running the place, all of these different things, or would I say she had some fuel left in her gas tank and she didn't use it and she didn't utilize it? Because as I was having the conversation with her, she was an intelligent girl. She had high IQ. It wasn't like a normal individual going through life. So to me, it was like, have you done your best? Right. And you know, it's funny. It's, I don't think it matters your IQ. It's communication skills nowadays. You know, you can be the smartest person and fly to the moon tomorrow and figure out, you know, the cure to coronavirus. But guess what? Your communication skills could be, you know below par. So I think it comes down to, again, holding yourself accountable, figuring out what your, your, your skills are, and, you know, striving through that. And if you're not communi- you know, communicative, um, <laughs> it doesn't matter how high your IQ is. You know, if you can't, you know, I guess, resonate that to your crowd, what good does it do? So, yeah, I agree. <laughs> how often do you help your mom with technology? Um, let's see. My mom, not that often. Luckily, I'm 25. She's uh, 45. So we've got a 20 years, you know, difference. I'm helping my grandparents more, uh, trying not to get fished and, you know, uh, guys click on fraudulent emails and go through all that. Yeah. Um, so luckily, I'm in cybersecurity. So that helps me a lot. But you know, I try to I try to let people know, you know, <laughs> try to do my due diligence and make people aware. So tell us a little bit about that. Because it's crazy world out there. And it was so funny. Um, I just got my SIM card hijacked um, two months ago. But yeah, two months ago from T-Mobile. And I had all the security. I mean, everything was the way that needed to be for that not to happen. So, But it did happen. But luckily, because I'm a little bit savvy, I was able to stop the bleeding within like five, six hours. And I stopped most of it. But the the bulk of the damage was already done. So tell us a little bit individuals that are not in that realm especially for the older are more mature because a lot of them i feel like they do need to know these things and i haven't seen a good course on it for individuals to take where it gives them all the at least all the basics yes well i'll start by saying first and foremost i'm not a tech um i do cybersecurity sales so anything i say don't you know hold me accountable technically speaking please uh, but I have been in cybersecurity and IT sales for seven to eight years now, going on eight years in the fall. Um, And one thing I can say, honestly, you know, is you just going through the motions of nothing's 100 percent, you know, so you can have a firewall. You can have your cloud backed up to your iPhone or whatever, a thumb drive, whatever you choose. Um, You know, you can take the precautions and do it, but nothing's going to be 100 percent because there's somebody out there who is sitting in a computer just like you and I are who are focused on getting into your account, stealing your information, your identity, your social security number, anything that they can. So like you just said, you had to replace your whole, you know, SIM card and go on, you know, do your whole life is probably on your phone. You're replacing your life essentially. Um, And that's what it is, you know, and that's why I strongly, strongly tell people all the time, you know, hover your mouse over that, you know, the little web browser, see what pops up. Is it real? Double check that it's coming from, you know, grandma or grandpa, whoever, you know, Miss John, his name is spelled with an H or is there no H? Make sure that, you know, pick up the phone. My age, don't do this. Pick up the phone, make a call. Hey, Teresa, did you send me this email with the coupon? No, I didn't. All right, then you know it's fraudulent, you know? So just pick up the phone and do that due diligence and make yourself, make sure you know, you know, just be account, hold yourself accountable. I I say it so much, but it's so true. Take responsibility because, Again, we live through our phones, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, we're only 
good as your security is and what's your risk tolerance? How much are you willing to take? You know, what's the risk that you're willing to take? Um, it's just like doing a home inspection for me, you know? So when you go to buy a house, you go through and you walk through with the inspector, any real estate agent. Okay. Or there's a crack there. You know, there's a crack in this foundation and maybe the windows you can fix. Same thing with it. Is your firewall upgraded? Have you and you're staying up to date in the latest right? of course you can't stay up to date all the time you know every four or five years we're recycling hardware um software as a service comes about and you've got a whole new you know now we're dealing with software it's a completely different genre so i mean the it world is crazy but if you could do yourself one favor change your passwords every you know 30 45 days make sure your passwords are changing i just got hacked two three weeks ago you know it's uh, they took over everything, my email, my accounts, I had to change my phone number, you know, I don't even have the same phone number. So it's just so crazy. Um, it really is, you know, people will not stop at anything. They're getting paid or they're going to get, you know, you're going to pay them for them to steal your information. So again, make sure you're going through the measures, walk, yeah. walk and, you know, listen to your updates, what cloud and, you know, all these people, Apple or your droid phone, send all oh, the uh, update to the latest iOS, update it. They're doing it for a reason. They want you to have yeah. your patches and update it. They, updates done. So. No, I agree with that 100. I kind of felt violated. I don't know. It was, it, it was like, it, it was a, a new experience. <laughs> I felt like, okay, this is not cool. <laughs> intruder coming through your window in the basement you leave that window open once every night once a few nights oh it's a nice summer night it's cooling down tonight you leave it open somebody's going to realize you're leaving it open you don't do the patches and updates uh you know somebody who's watching will realize you're not doing them so it is it's an, an invasion of your privacy it's make you know you, you get nervous and paranoid who has my info what are they going to do how long is it going to take them to do it you know so Yep, you just, you have to protect yourself and remember that risk tolerance bar. I mean, how much are you willing to risk? <laughs> no, I agree with that. So how do people find you? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> honestly, I find a lot of people. I do a lot of Facebook searching, stalking, whatever you want to call it. Instagram, LinkedIn. LinkedIn's my best friend. I've got over, you know, 3,000 connections of people. That, um, it's just great. You know, it's I've opened up my entrepreneur world to, you know, different slow people and whether they're in IT, insurance, uh, the restaurant bar industry, hospitality, I'm, you know, pretty much, I try to stay surrounded in everybody's, you know, pool. So, yeah, people awesome. find me, but I'm mostly finding you, so. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule being with us. Hopefully, we'll do a couple of more videos, a little bit getting more technical because I feel like we have to help a lot of people protect their identity because when it does happen, it's not a cool. It's not a cool feeling. So if you can help, that would be totally cool. But okay. but just like you said, everybody needs to do their own. They need to be responsible and do their own. And and I learned through this process. I was telling my wife the other day. I was like, I learned how to do a lot of different things. Now I'm putting another layer of protection. I'm doing a lot of things to make sure that we're staying safe. Like you just said, learn. The biggest piece is user education. If we can educate everybody and let them know and become aware, I mean, it's just another check mark. You know, box and a check mark. You could just check right off so definitely say hello to your mom stay safe <laughs> you too thank you talk to you later Bye. Bye -bye.